In a previous video we have looked at the possibility of how a saucer-shaped extraterrestrial craft could work. Based on different sources like Bob Lazar, witnesses and different people that in one way or another had direct or indirect contact with this technology. The content you're about to see in this video will seem really far-fetched for most of you. We advise you to use your discernment and a healthy amount of skepticism. Nevertheless, also to keep the spark of curiosity and seek the truth. The content in this video is only an idea based on different sources, but remember that truth is often stranger than fiction, so probably the stranger these ideas get, the closer to the truth they are. I've been always obsessed with flying machines. That's why I created this channel in the first place, to share my passion with the community about airplanes, drones, their history, and to show how they work. But have you ever thought about a flying machine that doesn't use wings? You might think that drones and helicopters don't use wings, but in fact, their propellers are little wings. They work the same way, except that they produce lift not in a linear motion, but in a rotary motion. That's why they are rotary wing aircraft. Lighter than the air aircraft are the only machines that don't use wings, such as balloons and zeppelins, whether using hot air or a gas lighter than air like helium or hydrogen. But what if there were more advanced ways of flying? Or even better, what if there was no need to fly at all in the conventional way? Theoretically, that's possible using the Alcubier drive, according to which, a spacecraft could achieve apparent faster-than-light travel by contracting space in front of it and expanding space behind it. Scientists say that traveling faster than the speed of light is not possible. It is supposed to be an unbreakable universal law of physics. But according to this idea, a warp drive spaceship won't move faster than light. It's the space around it that is going to move, not the ship. It is possible that if these kind of spaceships can do that in outer space, they can also do that on Earth's atmosphere, achieving the illusion of flying. To the eyes of the public, if we manage to build this, it will be the first ship in our planet to be able to fly using some sort of electrogravitic technology for propulsion. I repeat, to the eyes of the public. Many people from different credible backgrounds said that similar types of machines have been achieved already in our planet and built by humans, most likely a technology that has been brought to us and not discovered by us. And apparently a good number of UFO and UAP sightings are attributed to these man-made crafts, allegedly made by black projects of the US government by reverse engineering of these technologies. This is nothing new. In the 1930s and throughout the Second World War, the Nazis had their eyes fixed on Antarctica, and during the war, it is believed they found something there from another civilization. Something that helped them develop other technologies that common people of that time couldn't even imagine. They even built underground bases in Antarctica and managed to build some type of bell-shaped craft that could levitate. If all this is true, even just parts of it, that would mean that making a machine like this one wouldn't be the first of its kind made by humans in our planet. Meaning that superior technologies have been around for a long time now. But why are these technologies being hidden to us? We actually mastered gravity control in October 1954. One of the members of my team for many years was in the vault. Uh, okay. Uh, he was the top scientist at the Naval Research Labs, the very large Department of Defense lab. What the public, and, the, and this is true of the senators and the congressmen and the White House, they are not read in to these other projects. They simply aren't. About a year and a half ago, we were providing enough information that they now realize that this is real, that the UAPs, UFOs are real, and they're beginning to realize that a bunch of them are ours but they're being used in deceptive indications and warnings, meaning false flag operations.
Now, imagine for a second a civilization many thousands of years more advanced than us. They have mastered the science of gravity and how to manipulate it, or how to be able to travel far distances in a blink of an eye. Now imagine a civilization even more advanced, one that doesn't even need physical bodies as we know them, but something more energetic, a type of being that can manifest things with their mind. Traveling from one place to another can be done by only thinking it. Okay, that last one seems a little bit far-fetched, but let's start with something more realistic to the human mind. A machine that is capable of producing a wormhole, or that is able to bend time and space to take shortcuts in the universe. Or a machine that can navigate the naturally occurring rivers of cosmic energy and gravity of our universe, using black holes and other anomalies for free propulsion, but still having control of their destination. I believe in the existence of infinite possibilities, of the everything. That means that whatever you can imagine is possible. Maybe not in this universe, but in a parallel one. If you resonate with these concepts, visit my YouTube channel called Beyond Possibilities, link in the description below, where I explain more of these ideas. But for now, let's explore the concept that since everything is possible, the existence of a machine that can do those things is completely possible. Say it in another way, it is 100% possible. Many people will say that what I'm saying is completely nonsense. But if you think about it, a bit more than 100 years ago, many things were considered impossible, including the idea of heavier-than-air flying machines that could carry a man on board. Sir William Thomson, also known as Lord Kelvin, a British mathematician, mathematical physicist and engineer born in Belfast, who even was the president of the Royal Society at some point, said the following in 1895, quote, I can state flatly that heavier-than-air flying machines are impossible." Unquote. In 1902, just a year before the first aeroplane was flown by the Wright brothers, Simon Newcomb, an astronomer, applied mathematician and autodidactic polymath, also said the following, quote, "...flight by machines heavier than air is impractical and insignificant, if not utterly impossible." Unquote. Yeah, that's what they said. And even years after the aeroplane was demonstrated to the public to be a real functional machine, some famous people continued to say that it was impossible, ignoring that it was already a fact. This is shocking, but that's how history is. And it is full of these kind of occurrences even to this day. That's why I truly agree with Socrates when he said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Because the more you learn about something, the more you realize that there is much more to learn. But there is people who like to create little bubbles around them, believing that they have achieved all there is to achieve. But the path of learning is infinite. Literally. So, because we are smart people watching an interesting YouTube video, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's just assume instead that we are learning many things about our very beautiful universe and that a single human lifetime is not going to be enough to study, understand and appreciate the vast existence in its many forms and expressions. Let's begin with the idea of the speed of light, and let's see how slow light actually is. Compared with teleportation, for example, if we plan to travel to other planets even within our own galaxy. The speed of light is roughly 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles per second. That's as fast as going around the Earth seven and a half times in one second or reaching the moon in 1.3 seconds, because this is the actual distance between the Earth and the moon in scale. Not if you have seen it in some images on the internet or textbooks, where the scale is not represented correctly. Compared to an aeroplane, that's extremely fast, but for interstellar travel, that's ridiculously slow. In this graphic, I'll show you the actual distance at the correct scale between the Earth and Mars. It is a difficult task considering that the average distance between Earth and Mars is 225 million kilometers. 
This distance varies according to each planet's position in its orbit. And this is how fast the light travels in between this distance. It takes about 12 and a half minutes to reach Mars. But what happens if the planets come closer? The closest recorded distance between Earth and Mars was in August 2003, when the two planets were 56 million kilometers apart. According to NASA, the two will not be that close again until the year 2237. By then, hopefully we won't care about how far planets are because we'll probably have the technology to reach them in a matter of minutes. If we want to travel to Alpha Centauri, which is the closest star to Earth apart from our own Sun, at the speed of light it will take 4.3 years. And to the closest neighbor galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, it takes 2.5 million years. Basically, if we plan to go there, it will take us longer than what the modern human civilization have been on Earth. Surely there must be a way or several ways to cover that distance not traveling in a linear regular fashion but manipulating the fabric of time and space. Whether we use an Alcovir drive machine, a reverse engineer alien spaceship or anything else, we definitely won't travel faster than light. We'll just take a shortcut, making it look like we have traveled at an impossible speed. The goal of all this is not only to make a machine that goes faster than light. The real goal is to use technologies to really improve our way of life in a global scale. These technologies are just tools that would allow us to lead our evolution on a positive trajectory, where suffering for basic needs is not part of the picture. Footage that the Pentagon said, this is a real 3D object, infrared sensors, no heat, no jets, no rockets. I said, how is that moving at those speeds? and then straight up against gravity. This is the alternative energy and propulsion systems. The things that would sit at your house, like your heat pump, all right, or in the hood of your car, that would run your car or your factory or your business or your home. Those devices that are not things that fly, those are just pulling energy from the fabric of space-time around it. Once they realized how this works, they realized the big industrialist and financial and global moneyed people, banking. This would be the end of that entire sector of the macroeconomic system. Macroeconomic system. According to whistleblowers that started to go public plus other former officials that have been talking about this issue for many decades, these technologies we're talking about in this video are already here. In fact, they've been in use by secret projects for many years now all funded with taxpayer money and probably money from other type of really nasty and unbelievable trades involving human trafficking for reasons that some of you wouldn't even believe. Disclosure appears to be very close nowadays, and many people still don't know how big this is. The vast majority of people have different opinions, because the truth is that the average human don't have enough reliable information of what is going on, and this has been like this on purpose. Hopefully, humanity will look back at this era and remember how greed for power and money almost destroyed our civilization and the planet. And all the information will be in our history books open to everyone to study. We'll remember how technologies that could change the life of an entire planet for the better were suppressed to preserve a slavery economic system so that the elite could keep the power. This video is dedicated to humanity.